All right, this section, section 4.4, .4, gets to kind of what we've been promising for a little while, is uh, solving equations with exponential functions and logs. To me, I don't know, I guess I'm a nerd, but I think this is the most interesting or fun section. I don't know why. Just using different tactics to try to, you know, solve for x or figure out what the mystery number is. That's kind of fun, but anyway, the first type of thing we'll learn is how to solve an exponential equation. And there are two different methods. One of them's more complicated, the other one's simpler. But the simpler method, of course, only works on some equations. So I think what I would do is if I'm given an exponential equation to solve, I'd think about whether the simple um, technique is going to work. And then if it doesn't, I'll try the, you know, the more difficult one. But the technique is outlined here, and it's, it will work for this first example. It's just kind of to, to show how it goes. But the idea is what you want to do is make both sides, <clears throat> excuse me, both sides of the equation have the same base. Um, so try to write them kind of like it says in this note here, a to the m power equals a to the n power. So the base is still a, even though, though the powers are different, m and n, still a, you know, is the base either way. But the idea behind that is if you have the same base on the either side, then you can just equate their exponents. So I think that's pretty much what it says here in the italics. It says, to solve the equations below, force both sides of the equation to have the same base in the exponential expression, and then you equate exponents. So like in this first example, I notice that the, on the left-hand side, we have a base of 5. The exponent's kind of complicated looking, but don't worry about that right now. And then the right side has a, well, it's not even an exponential function, it's just 125. But I think what you want to do is say, you know, think to yourself, the 5 and the 125, can I both get those to look like the same number to some power? Well, 125 is a power of 5. 125 is 5 to the third power. So if I rewrite it like that, then they will have the same base on either side. Let's see, so I'll rewrite it like that. Um, 5 to the third power. All right, now that they have the same base, I can just say one exponent equals the other. Now that they have the same base, 5, we can equate exponents. But of course, that's not always possible to, uh, to make both sides have the same base. So in example two or objective two, we'll kind of see what to do in that case. But for now, we're assuming that we can do that. So we'll just, like it said, set the, the exponents equal to each other. 3x minus 6 equals 3. And then we'll solve this. So let's see, to solve this, it's pretty simple, right? We know how to do this. We're going to add 6 to both sides. And then we'll divide by 3. So it says 3x equals 9. And then we'll just divide both sides by um, 3. And that should give us the, the solution x equals 3. All right. Sounds good. And you know, you can always check your solution. It's not a bad idea. In these problems, though, if you did everything right, you sh it should work. So let's see, what was the original equation? I think it was 5 to the 3x minus 6 equals 125. So to check, I'll replace x with 3. It'll be 5 to the power of 3 times 3 minus 6. We'll see if that's actually 125. That's 5 to the 9 minus 6 power, which is 3. That is 125, right? 5 to the 3rd power is 125. Okay, that's, we'll say that's check. It checked out, so okay, we're good. Let's try another one here. 1b. I'm looking at the bases. You have 4 to a power and 64 to a power. So you kind of, I don't know, you almost have to kind of recognize the powers. I know 64 is actually 4 to the 3rd power. Equals 4... And you know, if you didn't know that or you weren't familiar with that, you can just always guess, like say, well, how about what's 4 to the 2nd power? That's 16, but that's not what I have. Let me try 4 to the 3rd power. You're just kind of stabbing in the dark and hoping it'll work. And it's like, oh, that works, 64, okay, good. So let me see, I'm going to try to rewrite both sides as the same base, although the left side's fine, it has a base 4. It's the right side that I can make have a base 4. That's 4 to the 3rd power. And now, like we said before, we can equate the exponents now that they have the same base exponents okay so we'll say that 2x minus 1 is equal to 3 and then we'll solve that for x so add 1 to both sides that, that'll give me 2x equals 4 all right and then we have it if we just divide both sides by 2 so x must be 2 and you can check that if you want but i think i think i'll just uh 
you know, I'll just trust myself for now. And then not waste your guys' time with that. All right, let's try this last one, at least in this objective, and then we'll see what to do if, if it's not possible to write both sides as the same base. So I think this one's definitely the most difficult one because if you look at the base on the left, it's an 8. The base on the right is a 16. First of all, there's an X on, in either exponent. We haven't seen that yet. But also, before in the first two ones we did, the right side can always be written as a power of the base on the left side. But this time, 16 is not a power of 8. 16 is not a power of 8, you know, meaning I can't raise 8 to a power and get 16. Because 8 to the 1 power is 8, 8 to the 2nd power is 64. There's, yeah, there's no way to get 16 out of it. So what we're going to have to do is almost break both of them down, 8 and, and 16. Think, are 8 and 16 both powers of maybe a smaller number? And they actually are. They're both powers of 2. 8 is 2 to the 3rd, and 16 is 2 to the 4th power. So that's what we're going to have to do is rewrite the left side as 2 to the 3rd power, and uh, the right side as 2 to the 4th power. But it's kind of weird because they are, already have an exponent, so I'm going to have to be careful here. I'm going to write yeah, 8 as 2 to the 3rd power, so that's the left side. But it already had an exponent of x plus 3, so that's kind of on the outside of that. That was 8, and 8 was being raised to the x plus 3 power. Um, and then all the right side is 16, and we said that is 2 to the 4th power. But that guy already had an exponent of x minus 1. Let's see, oops, I'm going to give myself more room here. Da -da -da -da. Okay, x minus 1, so that would be kind of the power on the outside, sort of, there. All right, let me re rewrite that. That looks terrible. 2 to the 3rd power, all raised to the x plus 3 power, and then 2 to the 4th power, all raised to the x minus 1 power, is what's going on. And then, at this point, to simplify, because we have to simplify before we equate exponents, I have to use an old exponent rule. If you have a power to a power like we have, you know, there's a third power, but then that's being raised to an x plus 3 power, I multiply the power. So I'm going to distribute the 3 um, onto the x plus 3, so it'll be a 3 times x, which is 3x, 3 times 3, which is 9. That'll be kind of the new simplified exponent. Um, and then on the right side, a similar thing's going on. I have to distribute that fourth power onto the x and the negative 1, so it'll be 2 to the 4x minus 4 power. All right, now, we, now that there's a simplified exponent, there's nothing more I can do. I'm now going to equate exponents. Exponents. Okay, and I might have to move. I might have to move this over a little bit because I'm running out of room. Let's see. So it's the one exponent on the left, which was three x plus nine, equals the exponent on the right, four x minus four. And we'll solve that guy for x. All right. Well, there's an x on either side. I'm going to bring the smaller coefficient x, which is three x, over with the larger. Just that way, I'm left with x instead of negative x. I won't have to worry about getting rid of the negative. So it's 9 equals x minus 4, and then my last step would be move the 4 over. So we'll add 4, and that should do it. All right, and this, you know, if you have a little time, this might be one you want to check, because this was a lot harder, I think, this example. So I'd be sure to check, but I don't want to waste your time with that. But that's pretty much how they're done. That's, that's the idea. It's, it's uh, kind of some guessing work involved. You know, you have to see what, what base both sides can be written, written as. And that works sometimes, but, but objective two shows you that it doesn't work all the time, and if it doesn't work all, all the time, you know, being able to rewrite both sides as the same base to a power, then this is kind of the, the more difficult method that just has to be done sometimes because there's no other option. Let's see, so what does this say? And I guess even before we read how to do it, I could just look at this example, let's see. Right now we're going to be solving 10 to the x power equals 8,000. Well, the left side has a power of 10, or it's, sorry, the base of 10, but the right side's 8,000. There's no way to rewrite 8,000 as 10 to a power. And I can't, you know, I can't rewrite both of them as something to a power. Like, 10 is not something smaller to a power. So there's no way to write them both as the same thing to a power, unfortunately. So I have to kind of go through this um, more complicated method. So it says, if it's not possible for both exponential expressions on the left and the right to have the same base as described above, we must take a log whose base matches the exponential function of both sides. As logs and exponent or sorry, as logs and exponentials are inverses, you may have to use the change of base formula. Okay, so like it says, you want to take a log of both sides 
whose base is the same as this base. So I want to use log base 10 because the base of the exponential function there is 10. So that's what they did. See, notice they started with the equation here. They took a log of both sides. They didn't write base 10 because I guess it's they said it's a common log, so there's no need to write it. But if you wanted to write it, you could. Um, and then for that reason, we had a property um, a couple sections back where if you have log base 10 of 10 to a power, pretty much if the base of the log and the base of the exponential match, they cancel, and you're just left with the exponent. So that's kind of how you get rid of an exponential base. And then you're just left with um, calculating this guy on your calculator. Uh, da -da -da, log... And we're lucky on this one because this is a common log, base 10, and there is a log button on your calculator that's base 10. So just type that in your calculator, and you should get about 3.9 or 3.90 if you round it to the nearest hundredths. Let's try that on the next one here. This one looks similar, so that should kind of be familiar. Since the base is 10, again, I want to use log base 10. So I'm applying, basically applying that to both sides. Log base 10 of the left side equals log base 10 of the right side. So the left side was 10 to the x, and the right side was 3.91. Alright, that looks good. And then, as we saw in the last problem, if you have log, a log with the same base that ma matches the base of the exponential, that's the argument of the log, they should cancel out. So this should just be x. Because it's kind of like, yeah, they're they're opposite operations. When you take a log base 10 of a 10 to a power, that, that cancels each other out. It's kind of like, you know, if I multiply by 10 and then I divide by 10, those cancel each other out because they're opposite operations. And then this guy, the, the left side, you can't really simplify on your own. I'm going to have to use a calculator. Oops. So a calculator should help me here. Da, 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 da. Okay. So I'll type in just log, the regular log button, because that's a base 10. 3.91, and I get about, I guess if you round it to the nearest uh, hundredths, 0.59 is about what that comes out to. And that's, I don't know if you're familiar, but that's what these little squiggly equal signs mean. It means approximately equal. Because we're, we're using a you know, strict equal sign the whole time, but now that we're rounding, we're not having it, we, know, we don't have an exact answer anymore. So I put approximately equal to. So we've got a few more examples here. Um, this one looks a little more complicated. It's got a lot more going on, but it kind of gives us a hint. It says, if you see a bunch, you know, a, a really complicated looking equation with an exponential, you want to isolate the exponential expression and then take the natural log of both sides. So I first have to isolate the exponential guy, which is just the e to the power. So I'm, I need to get rid of the 7 in the front, and I need to get rid of the 5 that's subtracting. Isolate, okay. I got a plan of action. Let me try it. I'm going to rewrite it down here a little bit so we can see it better. 7e to the 2x minus 5 equals 58. So first I'm going to add 5 to both sides to start isolating the e to the power. Add 5. Okay, there it is. So we'll be left with 7e to the 2x equals, and that would be 63. Is that right? Yeah, okay. And then we'll get rid of the 7, and then we'll, that way we'll have the, um, the exponential expression all isolated. And that's nice. I think this happens a lot. They give us nice numbers, because 7 goes into 63 evenly, 9 times. Alright, and now we're kind of starting where we were in the previous examples, where, you know, it started as 10 to a power. Now we're going to take a log base e of both sides. Apply, or apply, I guess you could say apply. Log base e, or... Of course, ln, that's the other name for it, to both sides. And that should solve it all the way. Because remember, if you want to know what kind of what kind of log do I take, you know, do I take a log base 2, log base 3, log base 4, log base e, log base 10, just look at the base of your ex exponential part of it. e is the base of this exponential, so I'm gonna, I have to apply log base e. So I'll go log base e of the left side equals log base e of the right side. Let's see, and the left side was e to the 2x. The right side was 9. The left side, like we've seen before, if the log's base and the exponential's base match, then they cancel each other, and you're just left with the um, exponent 2x in this case. And we had, we had a property we wrote out a couple sections back that said that. The right side, there's not, not really much I can do other than use my calculator. So I, I just have log base e of 9 
which we know if you have a log base e, that's really ln of 9. So I'm going to put that in my calculator. Let's see. So I have 2x equals, and I'm, I'm going to have to round this guy. Uh, let's see. If I put ln of 9 in my calculator, oops, ln 9, and I round it to the hundreds, I guess. We're kind of on, the, on a roll there. I get 2.20 or so, something like that. And now we'll divide by 2. Let's see. Divide by 2, divide by 2. So I should get 1.10 if you were to divide those guys. There we go, that looks good. That one was a lot more work, so it's just t it takes some practice. Let's try this other one. This one actually looks a lot easier because the exponential is already isolated. You know, in the last one, there was a coefficient and a five subtracting at the end of it, so I had to get rid of them. But this time, yeah, the exponential expression is already isolated. So unlike in the previous one, I don't have to do those first two steps. I can just go ahead and apply a log to both sides. And the log I want to apply is the one whose base matches the base of the exponential. So I want to apply log base 7, which we haven't done yet. We've only done natural log and log base 10, but oh well. We'll see how this goes. So I'm going to say log base 7 of the left side equals log base 7 of the right side. Okay, the left side was 7 to the x plus 2 power. The right side was 410. And as we've seen quite a few times now, this log base 7 and the 7, the base of the exponential will cancel. And you'll just be left with the exponent x plus 2. On the right side, we're trying to calculate log base 7 of 410. That's not a button on my calculator. Because the only buttons I have in my calculator are log base 10 and log base e. So what we have to do, like it kind of described in the directions here, we must use the change of base formula, unfortunately, of base formula. Wow, well, I don't know why I put a sad face, I guess. Just extra work for me, which I don't like. Remember, the change of base formula, which I think we saw in the previous section, you choose a, um, you choose a base you want. Like now I have a base 7, but I'd rather have... But I'd rather have as a base 10 or a base E, because those ones are actually on my calculator. I don't know, E is kind of a weird number to me. It kind of freaks me out because it goes on forever. So I think I'll change to base 10. Although you should get the same answer either way. Change to base 10. All right. If you remember how the log um, change of base formula went, you go... It's going to be log with this, the base we want, so 10, of something, over log with the base that we want, base 10 of something. And the, th the way that things go is you take the old base, or sorry, the old argument, which is 410. That's the argument in the numerator. The old base, which is 7, is the new argument in the denominator. And then the left side just kind of along for the right. It's waiting to see what the hell we're doing over here. Okay, now I'm going to put that in my calculator. I'm going to say log of, you know, 410 on my calculator. Log 410 divided by log 7. Because just like we said, the log button with no base is automatically a base um, 10. All right, we want log of 410 divided by log of 7. And that gives me about, let's see if I round it. Oh, let's see. Here we go, about um, 3.09. Now, I'm almost done. I just need to subtract that 2 to isolate x all the way. There we go. So x must be 1.09, or about. I should, I should put the squiggly equal signs because it's not exactly right. We rounded. OK, looks good. Very nice. OK, now the next objective is to talk about how to solve logarithmic equations. It's kind of the same principle. You know, the previous ones we did, um, this objective 2 stuff, we said, well, actually, let me go to the higher one. Yeah, here. Because we start out with an exponential equation, so there's, it's kind of like you need to get rid of that exponential. I don't want to see x in the exponent. I just want to see it outside the exponent. So what you do is you apply a log, which is the opposite of an exponential, to both sides to get rid of the exponential. In this objective, though, objective 3, we have a log that we want to get rid of. So we do the opposite and, and apply an exponential. So just keep, it, keep that in mind, it'll help. That exponentials and logs are uh, inverses of each other, so they should kind of cancel each other out. 
But let's see. Let's let just read the directions, kind of. But that's the idea. It says, okay, to solve an e equation involving logs, you want to raise both sides as exponents of a base that matches the base of the log. But be careful because logs can have neg or sorry, they cannot have negative arguments. So be sure to check your solutions. So for sure, I think in exponential equations, the ones we've been solving, as long as you've done everything correctly and you were careful, you shouldn't really have to check your solutions. It's not a bad idea, especially on an exam, just to be safe. But those ones, yeah, as long as you did all your al algebra right, you should be good. But these ones actually, logs are kind of weird. You could you could do all your algebra right, but there's like there's a solution that you get which actually won't work. So it's weird. It's almost like the algebra f fools you into thinking there's a solution when there's not really. You have to check your solutions here. But okay, like it says, you want to, like the previous ones, you want to first isolate the, when the previous objective we isolated the expon exponential expression, but now we want to isolate the log. And then we'll, like, like they said, raise both sides, sides as exponents. Of, and then I look at the log, that's a ln, which means base e. So that's what I want to use as my um, base of my exponential. But first things first, like we said, we need to get the log by itself, which means get ridding, getting rid of that 4 in the front. Since the 4 is multiplying by the log, I have to divide by it to get rid of it. Okay, but now that the 4 is gone, just the ln is all by itself. I can't get rid of the 3x, that's inside the log, so there's no, no hope of getting rid of that 3 or something like that. Okay, now what I want to do, like it says, is you want to raise both sides. They're going to become exponents on e. So I'm just saying e to that power equals e to that power. That's pretty much what we have, and I don't know. I'm just going to rewrite it just in case. You don't have to. So it looks like e to the power of ln 3x equals e to the power of the, or e to the second power. So the, the point of that is that if you have, um, I guess off to the side, if you have, I don't know if we've explicitly written this rule out. We have something, some base to a power of a log that has the same base, like that. So it's like a base a to the power of log base a. Then those are opposites, so they should cancel the log base a and the base a. And all you are left with is the argument of the log. So we're kind of using that property here. Because ln is a base e. So this is kind of what we're looking at. e to the power of log base e equals e to the second power. So that means that this e and this log base e should cancel. And you're just left with 3x equals e squared. And I guess, you know, I could put e squared in my calculator if they wanted an approximate answer. Or I can just go ahead and solve for x by dividing by 3. That'll work. x equals e squared over 3. That would be your exact answer. But if you if they wanted an approximation, I guess, then you'd put that in your calculator. e, there should be an e button like we discussed before, to the power of 2, and then I'll divide that by 3. And if I round that to the hundreds point, I get 2.46. So it kind of depends if they wanted an, an approximate answer rounded to the nearest whatever, then you want the 2.46. But if they want the exact answer, you'd leave it as e squared divided by 3. Okay, let's try this next one here. We got log base 4 of x plus 5 equals 3. Well, this time the log is already isolated. There's nothing in the front multiplying by the log. There's nothing adding or subtracting with the log. So that's nice. I don't have to isolate the log. Already isolated. Okay. So I can. I should just be able to go ahead and raise both sides as powers of the base that matches the base of the log. So since the base of the log, of the log is 4, I want to say it's 4 to the power of log base 4 x plus 5. But of course, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So the right side is going to look like 4 to the third power. So of course, and of course, the three came from what was on the other side of the equation. All right, and then on the left side, the four as the base of a, the exponential and the log base four cancel. As long as those are the same number, you know, the base of the exponential is four, the log's base is four. All right, then what was inside the log is all that's left, x plus five, and then four to the third power. We've seen that guy before, sixty-four. And then I can solve this all the way if I just move the five over. There he is. X equals, that'd be 59. There we go. Oh, and then, did I forget to check the answer in the last one? Oh, jeez. Oh, Lord. I even said, oh, it's really important to check your answer. And then I forget. Ay, ay, ay. Well, let me try to take a little room here. Sorry. I'm going to check this guy. But the one thing that you have to keep in mind, I guess, is you don't really have to check, I guess, if the, um, 
if the solution checks out, you don't have to actually plug in, you know, the x value and see. You're just checking to be sure, sure, the argument won't be negative. The argument in the log. In log won't be negative. All right. So it's, it's kind of like you don't have to check all the way. You just kind of check halfway. What, was, what do we start with in this guy? I forgot. 4 ln 3x equals 8. All right, let's see. 4 ln 3x equals 8. Okay, and then the exact answer we got was e squared over 3. So I'm going to try to replace that guy. So it's 3 times x, but we think that x is e squared over 3. All right, and we got to see if that's 8. Or, well, we'll just, we just have to really see if the argument's positive. It's okay. 4 and then ln, and actually these 3's cancel to just to leave us with e squared. And that, th that argument's definitely positive, e squared argument. Because remember, argument just means that's the thing that's inside the log. It's definitely positive, because e is a positive number. Remember, it's 2.7, yada, yada, yada. And if you take a positive number and square it, it's definitely positive. So that's really all that matters. As long as you plug that value in and you get, um, what's it called? And you get a positive number in the argument, that's it. But if you want to check all the way, like you say, well, I'm not sure if I did all the work right. You know, I guess, yeah, checking up to here is just making sure that this is a this is not a, one of those weird problems that a solution actually isn't a solution, even though you did all the work right. So we're done with that. But if you're kind of not sure about your work, you want to make sure that you did it right, then you have to finish it off by simplifying it. Because right now we have 4 ln of e squared equals 8. So I want to simplify this and see if it's actually true. Well, what I have to do is, I'm going to have to use one of those log properties. Remember there was a property that was the power rule. If, if you have a power inside a log, like this square, I can take it and move it in the front and make it a coefficient. So now it's 2 times 4 ln and, of e, and the 2 is gone because I moved it to the front. So that was me using the power rule. Alright, and then I think I can simplify this. Let's see. 2 times 4, the number in the front becomes an 8. And then I have ln e equals 8. But ln e, look, look, if I think about that guy, what is he? Let me see, I didn't really leave myself enough room. I'm going to um, erase it a little bit. Here we go. ln of e, what does that mean? 8? That's log base e of e. That's what this really means. And that log is asking e, the base, e to what power is e? Well, it'd be a 1 power. So log base e of e is 1. So it ends up being 8, to, 8 times 1 equals 8. That's true. So we did do this problem right. Okay, that was me checking to make sure my work was right. But like I said, the first kind of checking we did was just to make sure that this is not one of those weird problems that doesn't have a solution after all. That's how some of these, <clears throat> excuse me, some of these go. It's really weird. This one, though, I'm going to check to make sure that it actually checks out. Check. I think this one should be easier. Log base 4 of x plus 5 equals 3, but I think that x will be 59. Let's see. Yeah, we got 59. Um, okay. So let me try to simplify this. This is log base 4 of 59 and 5 is 64. That is true, actually. Log base 4 of 64, that's saying, remember, 4 to what power is 64? What power is 64? And that would be 3. Because 4 to the 3rd power is 3, and that checks out. Alright, we must have done it right. Good. Alright, let's try this next one. So this next one, I want to I try to attempt to do the same thing, but notice there are two separate logs. There's a log of x plus a log of x minus 3. What I have to actually do is use either the... what was it called? I forgot what we called it. The rules... use the rules of logs in the previous section to combine into one log. Rules of log to combine into one log. I think we called it the product rule in this case. There was a product rule and the quotient rule. This one we're going to use the product rule because there's a plus in between. If you remember, if there was, it's a log plus a log, that means you can combine them into one log where their arguments are being multiplied. So I'm going to write log of, okay, and then multiply their arguments. There was an x in the first argument, so that'll be going in there in the parentheses x, but then times the other argument, let's see, which was x minus 3. So he's going to go here. And you can do this, of course, you can use the product rule or the quotient rule, whichever one applies. 
as long as the logs have the same base. And since they have no visible base, those are automatically common logs which have a base 10. All right, so I'm really left with log. And I think now I'm going to write base 10 because I think that's going to help. And then I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to distribute this x in here eventually. Either do it now or later. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. All right, now we're ready to do like we described in, in the uh, beginning of these problems. How do you solve these guys? You raise the base, you know, whatever the base of the log is, in this case 10, take that and make it a base of, of an exponential that has the left side as an ex its exponent and the right side as its exponent. So I do 10 to this power equals 10 to this power. And the whole point of that, like we saw before, is that the 10, base 10 of the exponential and the base 10 of the log cancel. So you should just be left with what was inside the log, x squared minus 3x. On the right side, though, you, it's, you can't get rid of the 10. It's just 10 to the power of 1, which is 10. And now I should be able to solve this in some way that I've seen before, because this is a quadratic equation, because it has an x squared and an x. So I either have to factor or use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula. I hope it factors because I think it's faster, but if you hate factoring, then you probably just want to use the quadratic formula. But either way, you have to get everything on one side first. So I subtract a 10, move it over. This guy, I think, actually does factor. He's x minus 5, x plus 2 equals 0. And if I set each of, each of those equal to 0, x minus 5 and x plus 2, and I solve it, I get positive 5 for the first guy and negative 2 for the second guy. This is one of those problems that's kind of weird, though, where if you check these, I think one might work and you keep it. The second one, you might not work, and you have to throw it away. So what was the original problem? It was log of x plus log of x minus 3. Okay, log of x plus log of x minus 3 equals, was it 1? Yeah, okay. But remember, like we, we mentioned before, we only have to, the only thing you really have to check is to make sure that the argument in either log will not be negative. So you want to just make sure, yeah, will the argument be negative or zero, that would be bad also. I'll have to throw it out if so. You know, either solution, if I get a negative or zero, I have to throw it out. Out if so. Okay, so let me try to check either one. And, you know, since we have two solutions, I have to check one at a time. I'll check x equals 5. Let's try that. So it'll be log of x, which I want to put a 5 there, log of 5, plus, and then log of x minus 3, but I want to put a 5 instead of x. So, okay, maybe it'd be easier if I use different colors. Here, I'm putting a 5 in, so 5 went there where x was, and a 5 went there where x was. So the first log is fine because the argument's a 5, which is positive. The second argument becomes a 2 if you subtract, which is also fine. Both positive arguments. Check. Okay, so x equals 5 is a solution. I can keep him for sure. I just have to check on x equals um, negative 2, the other guy. Okay, let's check him. The equation we're trying to plug it into, log of x plus log of x minus 3 equals 1. But the x I want to put in there is a negative 2. All right, let's see how this looks. Negative 2 goes there, negative 2 goes there. It's already a bad one because the very first log has a negative as its argument now, as does the second one. If I simplify that, negative 5. We can't, there's no negative arguments allowed. You can't have a negative inside a log. Arguments allowed. So the solution x equals negative 2 isn't actually a solution. I throw it away. So there's only one solution x equals 5. So just be careful though because it's not because the second solution x equals negative 2. It's not because x was a negative number. So x equals negative 2, that was fine. That could have actually worked out. It's just because when I plugged it in, I got negative arguments. If either argument's negative, it's bad. So, you know, if you, if you had plugged it into something like, uh, I don't know, log of 2 minus x, something like that, let's say that was the log you had in, in your equation for some reason. Just, just throwing it in there for fun. Well, the very first solution we got was x equals 5. That would be bad, actually, because if I put a 5 there, it's 2 minus 5, which is negative 3, which gives me a negative argument. So I'd have to actually throw away the 5. 
But if I plug in a negative 2, the second solution we got, it would be 2 minus negative 2, which is positive 4, and that would have been fine. So it just kind of goes to show you that you can't just look at your solutions and say, oh, one of them's negative, that's going to be the bad one. I think oftentimes it is, but not always, so just be careful. You actually have to plug them in to be sure. All right, let's try this last guy here. We got log base 5 of x plus log base 5 of 4x minus 1 equals 1. Looks really similar to the last one. I have to first combine the two logs into one log using... It's the product rule because it's a plus. If there was a minus in between, I have to use the quotient rule. So it's x for the, the argument from the first log times 4x minus 1, the argument from the second log. So it's log base 5, and then I'm just going to multiply those out. x times 4x is 4x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. All right, now we can do our whole trick where we, we rewrite both sides as powers of the base that matches the log. So the log has a base 5. That means I want to use base 5. 5 to the power of log base 5. 4x squared minus x, and then equals, and you have to do the same thing on the, the right side, 5 to that power as well, 1. And the left side simplifies, let's see, 5 is a base of the exponential, and then log has the same base, so all that'll be left is the argument of the log, 4x squared minus x. The right side, you would just simplify, 5 to the 1 power is 5. If it was like 5 to the 2nd power, it would be 25, you know, whatever. Now I want to bring everything to one side and try to factor it, let's see. If I move the 5 over, it'll be 4x squared minus x minus 5 equals 0. And this one actually factors into 4x minus 5, x plus 1, or vice versa. Of course, if you put x plus 1 on the left and 4x minus 5 on the right, that'd be fine as well. We'll set the left guy equal to 0. We'll solve that for x. x plus 1, we'll set that equal to 0. So the left one, if you solve it, you get positive 5 fourths, and the right one, you'll get negative 1. But I have to check those to make sure that um, the ar argument of either log would not be negative. So let's see, the, the original problem looked like log of x plus, what was he, log of 4x minus 1. Log 4x minus 1 equals 1. So both, I'm going to have to separately substitute each of these potential solutions into this guy to see if it's actually true. Minus 1 equals 1. What was the base? I already forgot. 5. Ah! Forgot to write that part, that's important. Log base 5, log base 5, log base 5. Okay. If I put a 5 fourths in there, let's see, log base 5 of 5 fourths. So far he's good because that's a positive number. Check, okay. What about the second one though? Let me see, I might need some extra room here. Alright. Come on, buddy. There you are. Let's see. So we're plugging in 5 fourths in the second log. It was log base 5 of 4 times blah minus 1. Alright, what do we get here? No, no, no. We're putting a 5 fourths in there. So let's simplify that guy. That's log base 5 of... Actually, the 4's cancel just to leave 5 minus 1. That's 4. So log base 5 of 4, that's fine also because that's a positive number in there. So as long as you end up with a positive number in either any log that you have in the original equation, you're good. All right, so we're able to keep x equals 5 fourths. That's a good solution. And we'll see about the other guy. x equals negative 1. Well, I can see right away it's bad because if I plug negative 1 in the left log, that is, that is the argument, and I'm not supposed to have a negative in the argument. And the right log would be the same thing. That'd be a negative 5. Negative argument... That means that x equals negative 1 is no good. I only have one solution, which is x equals 5 fourths. Alright, that happens a lot. I mean, sometimes you actually get to keep both, which is kind of weird. Sometimes you have to throw both away, which is weird too, but a lot of times it's just one of them keep and one of them throw away. Alright, now we're going to use, for our ne next objective, we're going to tackle a different kind of log problem. This is a problem where, you notice on, like in this first example, I have logs running around in both sides of the equation. I have a log on the left, and then two logs on the right. But notice that every single term is just a log. There's no extra terms. Like in the previous examples we saw, how did it start out? Like, um, like this guy, you know, there was a log and another log, but then there was just a regular one. He's just a regular guy. But in the problems we're tackling, it's like everything is part of a log on either side. There's nothing that's not involved in a log. So if you ever see that, what you want to do is, well, combine... On either side of the equation, you want to combine logs using the product or the quotient rule. 
But then you use this one-to-one -one product property of logs. That pretty much it means if you have a log equals a log, you know, if it's just one log on one side, one log on the other, you can almost pretty much cancel the logs and their arguments are equal. So notice the argument on the left was m, the argument on the right was n. As long as they have the same base of their log, that means their arguments must be the same too. We can use that to solve this first problem in this objective, but we need to combine logs first. So that's kind of our idea here. We're going to combine logs um, that are on the same side of the equal sign. Side of the equal sign. Then we'll be able to equate arguments, you know, set the arguments equal to each other. That's the idea. So the left side's fine because there's only one log, but the right side has two logs. And it's because there's a minus in between the logs, I have to actually use the quotient rule. So remember, the product rule applies when there's a plus between your logs. The quotient rule applies when there's a minus. So that means this is going to end up being the quotient of two arguments. So it's always the left argument in the numerator, or sorry, yeah, 7x minus 23. And then the right argument, x plus 1, goes in the de denominator. There we go, but now that it looks like just one log equals one log, and they do have the same base, this is log base E, and this is also log base E, because that's what ln means, so we're okay to do this. Now I just say that their exponents, are, or sorry, their arguments are equal. x minus 3 equals the argument of the right side, 7x minus 23 over x plus 1, and I just get to solve that. No need to worry about logs anymore, they're all gone. This one's tough. Actually, to solve this, since there are x's in the numerator and denominator, I have to multiply both sides by that denominator because it's too hard to solve for an x when he's stuck in the denominator. I want to get him out. Now he's in the numerator. He pops up on the left side. x minus 3 was already there, but I'm multiplying that by x plus 1. The right side, the x plus 1's cancel, so I'm just left with the old numerator. So let me um, multiply out the left side. That's x squared minus 2x minus 3 when you combine like terms after you FOIL. And now I want to get everything on one side because this is quadratic. And I'll attempt to factor. If it doesn't factor, I'll use the quadratic formula. So move the 7x over, add the 23 over. All right, that'll give me x squared minus 9x plus 20. Hmm. And actually, I think that does factor. Yeah. I think that's x minus 5x minus 4. Because those, those numbers multiply to 20 but add to negative 9. Nice. All right, so let me check. Or, uh, sorry. Let me... uh solve each of those. Set x minus 5 equal to 0, and then set x minus 4 equal to 0. If I solve each of those, I get 5 and 4. But I should check. Let me see. And you know what? You can check in your head. I know we've written them out every time so far, but I'm going to check in my head. Let me see. So first I'll focus on 5. What I'm going to do is just picture what would happen if 5 went in any of these logs. So let's see. Let's stick with the first or the left one for now. If 5 went here, inside the log would be 5 minus 3, which is positive 2. So that should be fine. He's good. So I'll move on to the next log. What if I put a 5 in this x? 7 times 5 is 35. 35 minus 23 is, uh, what is it? 12? So it's pos positive, so that log's fine also. The last one would be, I'll put a 5 in the last log. Inside the log, I'll have 5 plus 1, which is 6. Okay, all positive numbers, so I'm good with x equals 5. So there's not really a need if um, to check it you know, outright. You don't have to actually write it out. You can kind of do it in your head. So now we'll try 4, same thing. I'm going to put a 4 in there. All right, what if 4 goes in the leftmost log? Then it would be 4 minus 3, which is positive 1. That's fine. That's a positive number. What if I put a 4 here? 7 times 4 is 28. 28 minus 3 is 5. That's a positive number also, so I'm fine. The last log has a x plus 1. If I put a 4 for that x, it'll be 4 plus 1, which is 5. And that's fine, too. So since either of these solutions gives me um, posit positive numbers in all the logs, I'm going to keep both. So I have two solutions in this case, 5 and 4. So that's one of those rare cases where you get to keep both solutions. Now let's try this next one. This one should be similar. What I'm trying to do is get it to look like log equals log. I want one log equals one log. So I'll have to combine these guys, and I'll use the quotient rule because there's a minus in between. So I'll write log of x minus, or sorry, x plus 4 goes on top, 2 goes on the bottom. And you know, on the right side, if there was more than one log, I'd combine them with either the product rule or the quotient rule, whichever applies. But there's only one log, so I'm fine. And since they don't mention the base, 
It must be a common log with base 10 on both sides. So since the bases match, the, I can kind of think of the logs on the left and the right canceling. And the arguments are all that's left. The x plus 4 over 2 and the 5x plus 1. I think this one will be a little easier. I can solve this in a similar way. You know, it's probably going to be hard to solve this if there's a 2 in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. It'll get rid of it on the left side, but it'll pop up on the right side. x plus 4 is all that's left on the left. I'll have to distribute this 2 on the right side, making it 10x plus 2. And now I just need to get the x terms on one side, because this is not quadratic like the last time. I'll isolate the x terms, move this x over, and subtract this 2. That way 2 is on the left side, 9x is on the right side. Okay, and if I divide both sides by 9, that should be the end of it. So x should be 9, or sorry, 2 ninths. I was going to say 9 halves. 2 ninths, but I should check to make sure that I won't get any negative arguments in any of the logs. But I think I'd check in my head. In my head. If you're not sure, you know, you're not sure if you can do it in your head, you can always write it out. No big deal. So I just keep in mind, too, that 2 ninths is not a number I'm very familiar with, but it's a positive number. So if I put 2 ninths here, 2 ninths plus 4, that's like 4 and 2 ninths. That's a positive number. The second log, there's no x, so there's nowhere to put it. There's already a positive number in that log. That's fine. If I put a 2 ninths here, that one, you know, you can kind of write out on the side if you want. Let's see, I got... Inside the log is 5 times x plus 1, but I want to put 2 ninths there. That's 10 ninths if I multiply, plus 1. That's 10 ninths plus 9 ninths, which is 19 ninths. Either way, it's positive. So hey, this is a good solution. I don't get any negative arguments. That's good. Okay, I think we're almost done with this section. We're getting there. Now we're going to be um, using solving equations to actually see real life stuff. So that's nice. Let's see, this objective... But we're, we don't have any new um, tactics, I guess. We're just going to use the tactics we've learned so far to solve these real-life situations. So nothing really new to learn here. That's the good news. Okay, what's this talking about? Medical research indicates that the risk of having a car accident increases exponentially as the concentration of alcohol in the blood increases. The risk is modeled by, okay, we got R equals 6E to the 12.77X, where X is the blood alcohol concentration... And R, given as a percent, is the risk of having a car accident. What blood alcohol concentration corresponds to a 7% risk? Okay, so they gave us a percent, 7, and they said that R stands for the risk in percent. So I would not put that 7 where X is. X is the, uh, what was it? Blood alcohol content. X is blood alcohol content. R is the percent risk. So I know based on what they gave me, they gave me 7% risk. I'm going to put that for R, not X. So 7 is actually going to go over here on the other side. And then the right side stays the same with an X. Because we don't know the blood alcohol concentration. That's what they're asking for. But now that we have R replaced, I want, I want to solve for X. Solve for X. All right. So I want to kind of isolate the exponential part, which we've done before. But the first I'll have to divide by 6 to do that. And 7, 6, you know, you could make that a decimal now, but I think it just looks ugly, so I'm just going to leave it that way for now and just kind of put everything in my calculator when I'm all ready. So now the 6 is gone. I have the exponential all solved. I should now be able to take a log of both sides to get rid of the exponential. And remember that the log you want to take is the same, has the same base as the exponential. Since the base of the exponential is a base E, I want to take a log base E of both sides. So I'm going to take a log base E of the left, a log base E of the right, um, let's see, so the left side was a 7 sixth, the right side was e to the 12.77x. Alright, and the left side, I'm going to put that in my calculator either now or later, but I guess just to remind myself, that's the same as ln, which that'll make it easier when I put it in my calculator. The, on the right side, the log base e and the e cancel, as we've seen before, so you're just left with the 12.77x, that was in the exponent. And I can actually isolate x right now before I use a calculator. Just divide both sides by 12.77. So the, the left side now, that's ex exactly the value that I want. That's exactly the answer. But I think they want an approximate answer. So I'm going to put that in my calculator. What's ln of 7 divided by 6? Whatever I get there, I'm going to divide it by 12.77. Looks like I get 0 0.012, I guess, is something around there. 
So that's like um, blood alcohol concentration of 0 0.012. Doesn't that mean 1.2% of your blood is alcohol? Actually, that's a lot. Isn't it? Yeah, right? I don't know. I think so. Interesting. So let's try the next one. We got something similar going on here. The formula A equals 37.3 E to the power of 0 0.0095 E. Okay. Models the population of California. Oh, sorry. You know what? Something messed up here. Because notice that they said T years after da da da. So I think this should be a T. I'm sorry. If you don't mind changing that little E that's in the exponent to a T. I think something got screwed up there. Sorry about that. So A is population. Okay, I gotta remember what's what. A. That way when they give me a number, I know where to put it. If they give me population, I'll put it for A. But if they give me T as number of years, I'll put that for T. Okay, the population of California in T years... Oh, after 2010. All right. So I want to know, when will the population reach 40 million? Well, 40 million is a value of A, because A is population. So I'm going to replace A with 40. T, we don't know. That's time. So we're going to have to solve for that guy. I think this, this equation is going to look similar to the last one. 40 equals 37.3 E to the 0 0.0095 T. And then we'll solve this for T. Solve for T. Okay. There we are. So kind of like in the last one, we have to isolate the exponential expression first. So I'm going to divide by 37.7. Or sorry, 37.3. What the hell? Why did I do that? And you know, I think the idea now is I could put this in my calculator, 40 divided by 37.3. But I'd have to round it, and then the next step, when I do something else, I'd have to round that answer. And the more times you round, you keep rounding and rounding and rounding, the further off your final answer will be. So I think what I would do is just try to wait till the end when you're all the way done, and then put everything in your calculator. Because then you only have to round one time, it'll be more accurate. So that's, I think that's a good piece of advice for this kind of thing. Only round at the very end for a more accurate answer. Because so I think I've had a student in a, you know, in a different class, but we were covering the same material as we are now. You know, they said, okay, I'm trying to do my homework online and I'm getting an answer that's close to theirs, but it's not quite theirs, so I keep getting it wrong. And I think their problem was they kept, like here, they would put this in their calculator and round it. And the next step, they'd round the, that too. And they kept rounding so many times that the answer wasn't, wasn't even close to the right answer. It was too far off. So I'd wait, anyway. Da -da -da -da. Oh yeah, what are we doing? Now to get rid of that exponential, we want to take a log of both sides that matches the base of the exponential. So I want log base E of both sides. Log base E of 40 divided by 37.7 equals log base E of E to the power of 0 0.0095T. And the left side, we'll put that in a calculator eventually. That's ln, in, other word, er, in disguise, 40 over, divided by 37.3 the right side, as we've seen before, the log base e and the e to the power cancels, and you're just left with the exponential, or sorry, just left with the exponent, 0 0.0095t. And the very last step would be to divide by the coefficient of t, and that should be my exact answer. Dun -dun -dun, there he is, 0 0.0095. Okay, that should be it. That's my exact answer there. But if I want to round it, you know, I kind of want to see what the hell year that is. I'm going to put that in my calculator. ln of 40 divided by 37.3. And then whatever I get, I'm dividing by 0 0.0095. So I'm getting about 3.4 years. But in this, the context of this problem, remember they said t is the number of years after 2010. So really it would be like in the year, oops, in the year 2017, I guess. If you're just adding these together. Add 2010 and 7.4. So it'd be the year 2017.4. So that's like halfway through the year or something like that is when the population should have reached that level. Interesting. Okay. Now let's try these ones. This is interesting. This is where we got to bring back those um, those formulas, the finances formulas. A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. Because they're saying compounded quarterly or compounded. What was the next one? Um, oops. Continuously. Oh yeah, remember continuously. That's the kind of easier formula. Per 
P-E-R-T. Okay, so we'll use those, but we'll fill in everything we know. So let's see. Um, they said, how long to the nearest tenth of a year will it take ten thousand, or sorry, a thousand dollars. Okay, that's the principal, because that's how much you're investing initially, to grow to 3600 That's the amount. That should be your future amount. So I know where to put that. And then 8% annually, that's R. So I'll put a 0 0.08 where R is supposed to go there. 1 plus R, which is 0 0.08. Let's see. 0 0.08 goes there. R, and then annual interest. Compounded quarterly, that means N is 4. Remember, N is the number of times a year interest is compounded. It looks like everything is known except T. That's the very last guy that we don't know. But that makes sense because they said when or how long or whatever they said. All right, so we want to solve. Oops, we want to solve this equation. What do we got? Thirty-six hundred equals one thousand times. You know what? I'm going to simplify what's inside here. Point zero eight divided by four. That's point zero two. If I add one, I got one point zero two to the four t. So all I did, yeah, was um. Take that 0 0.08, divide it by 4, and then add it with the 1, and I got this guy. So that, that way everything's all simplified. Now I think it's it's a good idea to solve for t. I'm already solve for t. So like we saw before, the first thing I should do is isolate the exponential. This 1,000 can move you know, over to the other side. Divide by it, and then now it's just something equals an exponential expression. The left side becomes 3.6. The right side now is just the exponential, 0 0.02 to the 4t power. Okay, and now, like we've seen before, you want to, since this is an exponential, you want the opposite of that, which is a log. But you want the log with the base that matches that exponential, which is weird, because the base is 1.02, and we've never seen a log with that weird base, but oh well. So take a log of base 1.02 on both sides. Okay, on the left side, it's lo that log of 3.6. On the right side, it's that log of 1.02 to the power of 4t. And the point of that, like we saw before, is that the log base 1.02 and the 1.02 as an exponential should cancel just to leave the 4t there. And then the left side, I'm going to have to use a calculator on that. We'll see how that goes. Okay. Da -da -da -da. And then the last step to isolate t would just be to divide by 4. And that should do it. Okay, what do we have? T is, that's the exact answer. Log base 1.02 of 3.6 divided by 4. But this is a log that I can't calculate on my calculator because I only have a log base 10 or a log base E. So I have to use a change of base formula again. Ah, change of base. Formula. So remember, that means... I want to take, well, I could choose the base I want. I definitely want a base 10 or a base E because that's what's on my calculator. Either way, we'll give you the same answer, but I think I like log base 10 because I just kind of, I can wrap my mind around 10 better. So it's log base 10 of, and the numerator is always your old argument. So the 3.6 kind of stays the argument in the numerator. The denominator takes on your old base, the 1.02. And now that's just to simplify the numerator, the big, you know, this old log. Once I'm done, then I have to divide by that same 4 that was already there. So that's that's a tricky one. i got to go, you know, in my calculator. I'll press the log button. Oops. Log of 3.6 divided by log 1.02. So I think, you know, I'd get something on my calculator, whatever it is, and then I'd press divide by 4 equals blah. So let's see how that goes. Log of 3.6 and then divide by log, oops, I pressed ln, log of 1.02. Now I'm going to divide by 4, and I got about, you know, I'm, I'm rounding here, 16.17 or so. And that, that stood for t, which was years. So it, it'll, it would take you 16.17 or so years to make $1,000 grow to $3,600. Well, if it has that interest rate anyway, and it's compounded quarterly. Okay, now I'll try this last one, this, um, what's it called? Continuously compounded one. This one should be easier because it's a simpler formula. So let's see, where does everything go? They said, 
How long to the nearest tenths of a year will it take $8,000, which is the principal, because that's how much we're investing to grow to 16,000, which would be your amount, because that's your future amount, at 8% interest. So R is the same thing as it was in the previous one, 0 0.08. But compounded continuously just means we use this formula instead of the one we did in the previous one. Sounds good, but then now I'm gonna replace everything. P was 8,000, A is 16,000. Okay, so he's going here, 8,000's going here. A equals P times E to the R, which was 0 0.08 times T, which is what we don't know. There we go. So now I should be able to solve for T. And that'll, like in the last one, it'll similarly give me the number of years it'll take for the, pretty much the amount that they invested to double, huh? Because it started as 8,000, they want it to be 16,000. So to solve this, I want to first, first isolate the exponential. So I'm going to get, get rid of the 8,000. That way the right side's just purely an exponential. It's just e to a power. Those actually divide nicely, so I don't really have to hold it. You know, like before we said, oh, don't divide those on your calculator yet because it's not a nice number. Well, 16,000 divided by 8 is just a nice 2. So no, no need to hold out on that. And then the right side, e to the 0.08t. And now we want to cancel the ex exponential, so we want to take a log of both sides that matches that base. Since it's a base e, I want to take log base e of both sides. And now at this stage, I'm kind of happy because I see that I'm, I'm using a log base e, or ln, so I shouldn't need the change of base formula. So I, just, I just should just be able to type my answer in my calculator as is. All right, that log base e and the e to a power cancel just to leave the power, which was a 0.08t. And the left side, I'll put that in my calculator later. I'm gonna rewrite that as ln2 so I remember what buttons to press on my calculator. And the last step to isolate t will just be divide by 0 0.08, and that should do it. Okay, let me see here. t is exactly ln2 divided by 0 0.08, but if I put that in my calculator, I'll go ln2 equals, I see the display, okay, it's 0 0.69 something something, divided by 0 0.08 gives me about 8.66 or so. So it'll take about 8.66 years, or that's about eight and a half years, huh? Take you about eight and a half years to double your money here. Oof, that was fun. All right, more fun with logs to come, don't worry. <laughs> but I think this is the most interesting section, I don't know, maybe I'm weird, I'm a nerd, of course. I guess if you major in math, you're probably a nerd, right? But hopefully you thought it was kind of interesting, uh, better than, I think the previous section was kind of boring, you know? It was just using the, the product rule, the quotient rule, was that fun? Not really. You didn't really see the point, but at least here we see a point to it because we're solving equations. But okay, sounds good. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in the next video.